Hello everybody, Ryan here from Manhattan Prep. Take a couple minutes with this intermediate level GRE problem and we'll discuss. Okay, so not an easy problem, but like with most discrete quant problems, you can actually approach it in multiple ways. And there will often be a way that is noticeably easier than the other. In this case, for instance, we could approach it algebraically. You can approach just about every word problem you want to approach algebraically, algebraically. But do we really want to? Looking at the facts of the problem, what do we got? We got 48 containers of soda. Okay, doable. It's a total. It's something plus something. But We've also got ounces getting involved, we've got cans and bottles, that's two unknowns, that means two equations, and that means complications down the road. Nobody likes complications, we want things to be easy. And so, we examine other options. What else do we have? We've got algebraic approaches, sometimes there are conceptual approaches, cool logic or visual ways to get through a problem, but probably the old faithful approach is something numerical. And in this case we have a problem in which question asks for a single unknown. How many bottles do we have? And we've got concrete numbers in the answer choices. This is a good case for working backwards from the answers. Just plug in some answers, see what happens, and eventually we may well get a match. Let's try it. Looking at these answers, one of the things that might jump out at you is right here in the middle, we got 24. Now 24 is a special number in this problem because when we consider it in the context of 48 containers of soda, 24 bottles would imply 24 cans, a 50-50 split. Now, could that actually be what's happening here? Probably not. Looking at that middle sentence, the number of ounces purchased in cans is supposed to be equal to the number of ounces purchased in bottles. How are you going to do that, though, if you have the same number of both and bottles have so many more ounces in each one than cans do? it would never work out, right? But that still leaves the question of where do we go from here? Does that mean we need a lower number of bottles than 24 or a higher number of bottles? Here, a little bit of estimation goes a long way, right? Thinking of it this way, if we have 24 cans and we have a small number of ounces in each can and we have 24 bottles and a big number of ounces in each bottle, we're gonna end up with too many ounces on the bottle side of things. And the only way we're gonna fix that and get to a correct answer is if we reduce the number of bottles. Like we can't have 24 bottles and 24 cans. It's too many bottle ounces. And then we certainly can't have 27 or 30 bottles because that's just gonna make the problem worse. And so even in going into working backwards here, we've got a short list of answers to work with. We've only really got two left. The nice thing about that is if we test one and it's right, we win. And if we test one and it's wrong, we win because it's going to be the other answer, right? And you can test whichever of these two strikes you as the easier one. Now, I might go for 18 in this case, and here's what I'm thinking. 48, kind of an ugly number, it's got an 8 on the end. 18, kind of an ugly number, it's got an 8 on the end, but put them together, and what are they going to leave us with? If 18 is our bottles, then we'd be left with 30 cans. And that's a nice number. If you don't see that, it's not that big a deal. You can plug in 21, everything's going to be fine. But a sneaky little play for nice numbers is always a welcome thing, right? Now, what do we have to do with this? Maybe we have 18 bottles, maybe we have 30 cans. We gotta test it though, right? We've already used the 48, so check. That piece of information has served its purpose, but we still got the 12 ounces and the 20 ounces and this relationship that says our number of ounces needs to be equal to work with. So having our concrete number of bottles, our concrete number of cans, we can use that stuff to figure out our total number of ounces, right? In 18 bottles, for instance, if each one has 20 ounces in it, then in total, we're going to end up with 360 total ounces. All right, that's fine, but we don't know if it's right yet because we need to do it on the can side and see if it honors that relationship in the middle of the problem. 
30 cans, 12 ounces per can, and lo and behold, 360 ounces, almost as though the problem planned it that way. That is an equal number of ounces in bottles and cans. And you gotta trust, that's only gonna happen for one of these answer choices, which means we have hit gold. We've got the right answer, A is the one, and we don't need to test anything else. Our work here is done. Thank you guys. Subscribe for more GRE Math Spotlight videos from Manhattan Prep, and leave us a comment letting us know how you solved it. Happy studying.